kuitaji I need you Firako na kupenda Kwa galanyo na kutaka Kwetaka na kuitaji Alone? I am the 
people not here? To read for me something is. I'm intelligent. I can think in a way that follows clear steps, increase my knowledge, solve problems, and change my life and the lives of others. I'm good and capable of good. I know and feel it when I'm doing the right thing. When I strive for what is good, I am happier because I have aligned myself to God's plan for me. I was created to excel and do the very best for myself and others. My heart can therefore only be at peace when I'm striving for excellence and doing well. I need to appreciate God and to love Him because I was made for love and to love. I should strive to love myself and all that he created. And this means that if I see a boy next to me and I'm a girl, I look at him as my brother. Not when you're told as boys and girls, you mix here and you start giggling and making all faces. Isn't that true? First, you look at each other as brothers and sisters. At this age, you have no business, no business whatsoever to think about sex. This is something many don't want to say it loudly, but I'll say it louder and louder. You have no business as a student to think about sex. This is a time you explore yourself as a young person to grow in all ways. Be friends with the boys around you if you're a girl. Boys, be friends with the girls around you. You look at them like a brother. And for you boys, you see her like a sister. You don't need to pick a her because it's her menstrual time and you make comments and you make fun. You imagine at home you have a sister. So if you heard your sister is facing the same thing in a school, would you feel good? Will you feel okay? I want a boy to lie to me here. So when you are with these girls here, you will have to look at each other like family members because you have no other business but to develop your intellect and all other parts of yourself. Sex will come at the right time. It is not now. You have no business completely. This is a hard truth that is not being said by many. And some of you are afraid to hear it. But I'll tell you, you have to hear it today. You think about your books, about your talents. If you're good in sports, do it. If you're good in music or like a musical instrument, play it. If you're good in writing poetry or drama, play it. The right time will come for you to think about those feelings. And you need to keep that until you are married, not now. You have no business. Because even after high school, no church. But one thing I was wondering is, you guys do not want to see it a boy and a girl. What's wrong with that? <laughs> Huh? What's wrong with a girl and a boy sitting next to each other? <laughs> Temptations. <laughs> From where? <laughs> where are the temptations coming from? <laughs> so that only means that you know you do not accept the other person who is next to you. When you hear your brothers and sisters, so that should not be a big deal sitting together. Why would girls want to sit in one place and boys on the other place? Does it mean at home you separate yourself? And we believe that when you are here, this is your society. This is your community as a school. So you interact with one another, the others accept you, then you are re realizing your social dimension. emotional dimension. So what do you understand by emotional dimension? This is concerned about how we control our emotions as we can fly to us. Uh -huh, how you control your emotions? The feelings you have for some people. Feelings you have for some people. 
Reaction to your anger. Reaction to your anger. So if somebody wronged you, are you able to control yourself? Sometimes. Sometimes you do. Yes. <laughs> so when you're talking about the emotional dimension, is just, you know, are you thinking? I would uh, let me say this. I guess you know a lot about these things already from the points of giving my wife is also watching a movie here. I want to discuss that stuff. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, you who heals, I pray that you heal all those souls that are gathered here and around the world. Forgive us our sins and guard us against all diseases that are disseminating humanity by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As agreed, the meeting of this afternoon will be devoted to the testimony of each one of us. It's about sharing of experiences and mutual comfort and not morbid intrusion into the life of others. A relief needed to free you from all anxiety. Brother Gerard. Yes, Jennifer. After much thought, I don't know if I have the courage to talk about what happened to me. Jennifer, nothing will force you to tell us your story. Nevertheless, it is a step that you will need to take someday. You will have to make this huge leap in order to break this beast that has taken possession of your heart and frightens you. You must overcome it, Jennifer. I'm trying, Brother Gerard. I'm trying. You will get there. Don't be afraid. Never think that God has turned his back on you. When we open ourselves to him and present our pain and suffering, he welcomes us with compassion and gives us the strength to face trials. If you don't mind, Brother Gerard. Yes, Crispin. Rose and I would like to start. Let's go. Rose, are you ready? Yes, brother. We are good to go. It all started during the 2009 holidays. Platini, Rose's older brother, who was my best friend, and I had just obtained our high school diplomas. A little change of the environment is good, as this year has really stressed us. Oh yes. I hope we'll find a small job on the other side to avoid boredom. Oh, in any case, the holidays will move at the speed of light as usual. Yeah. It's about time. I have to go. Let's meet at the university without failure. That's more like it, buddy. Have a great trip. Thank you. Take care of yourself. 
and come back to me in one piece. Yes, Rachel. You too. I'll miss you. Take care of yourself. Him again. Let it ring. He'll tie himself one day. You think he's suspecting something? Not the least. What? Are you afraid of that? No. I don't know. It feels weird. The day he will see us together. Well. He'll understand that you don't love him anymore. He's not your type. And I'd warned you. You need someone like me. <laughs> Crispin? You are going to stop looking for me. I told you never to speak to me. Crispin, listen. It's an old story. Besides, it's not my fault. It's not your fault? It's not your fault? And you are supposed to be my best friend. Whatever. Crispin. 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 These things happen, buddy. Since those years he used to visit Bratton, how comes it's only now that you're telling me all this? Eh, uh, you know darling, we often fail to see the treasure that is on the tip of our nose. But, then what will you do with Rachel? She opened my eyes by sleeping with my brother. My eyes are now focused on you. When Crispin was seducing me, I didn't know that he was out to revenge against my older brother. Neither did I know that I was already HIV positive from my previous sexual relationships. No one in my family had ever talked to me about the values of abstinence before marriage. Rachel and I were very much in love. We had agreed not to have sex until our marriage. I don't know, anger, alcohol, all this led to a one-night stand that I regret to this date. The disclosure of my HIV status was a stroke of grace. I was out to harm Platini without knowing that I was stabbing myself. Leave alone Rose who had committed no wrong. Rose and I are no longer intimate. But a great friendship based on Respect for God and moral values unites us ever since. That's just about our story. Thanks, Crispin. Thank you, Rose. The floor is now open to anyone with something to say. It was in the afternoon. We were in the cyber. While I was busy doing research, Eric and Gillis, my friends here, were busy chatting away on social networks. Wow. Do you see what I'm seeing, guys? Let's see. Ah, the bomb. Go ahead. Ask her out. Yeah. Take a look, you too. But frankly, friends, you are interfering with my concentration here. Hey, don't boss with your stupid research, man. The campus has already been invented, Frank. You're not going to reinvent it with your fucked up research. You should instead use it to explore unknown territories. Trusting that you will never get lost. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That one, for example. Wow. 
Wow. It's up to you, Frank. Frank. You know my principles very well. Your principles are medieval, dude. Go ahead and seduce her. No. Just once to prove that your plug is not out of service. No, I say no. We are going to tell all our friends that your plug is dead. Are you mad? Sick? Come on, you are not going to do this to me. That's exactly what we'll do if you don't sleep with her. Frank. Good evening, lady. Good evening. My name is uh, Frank. Uh, and you? Francine. I'm delighted, Francine. Could we exchange numbers? Why not? This is my number. Can I call you? Uh, we go out for a drink tomorrow? With pleasure. With pleasure. If only we could turn back the hands of time and stop this challenge. Unfortunately, under our incessant taunts and harassment, Frank gave in. And this stupid challenge that we had thrown at him, just to prove to us that he was once a man enough, that one time would prove fatal. He was completely depressed the day we found him at home. A friend of a hunt had revealed that Francine was a girl of loose morals and was HIV positive. The screening test done a few months later confirmed the irreparable. We are standing by Frank, but that unfortunately cannot change his HIV status. We really regret it. We are the ones who deserved what he got. Today, we present our public apology, Frank. You could have as well left me to carry my own cross alone, but you have decided to stand by me. That has given me extraordinary strength to move forward, my friends. Let this story be a lesson to all our age mates. The only worthy challenge is respect for our religious values and academic success. The rest is nothing but vanity and no one should end their life in regrets. Thank you. For your sincere friendship because it deals with more than 50% of this evil. Thank you, Frank, for your noble spirit and love. These are formidable weapons that we all need in order to advance. At the moment, Jennifer, we are listening if you are ready. I will try.
I'm the eldest daughter in our family and I only have a younger brother who's 14. We lost our father when I was 16 years and my brother 8. Two years later, we found ourselves in a very difficult financial situation. I'm tired. Rice every day, but we are not potty, are we? But stop blabbering all the time. Maybe you're right with you. I'm fed up. No electricity, no swimming pool, no car to take me to school. Rice every day, it is like hell down here. What do you want us to do? You want us to steal? When daddy was here, I wasn't going through this shit. That's enough, Joel. But your brother is right. It is true that your father's accounts are all dry, but will not continue to live like church mouse. Perhaps we need to do something. But if I was alone, ma'am, we would fire the house helps and sell juice or ice to make ends meet. Sell juice or ice? In which house? Pardon me? You'd like us to become the laughing stock of the neighborhood? But ma'am, what the hell do we care about being mocked by the neighborhood? We are almost dying at the moment. Never, never in my lifetime, you hear? You'll do better by getting yourself sugar daddies to provide for us than to try to demean me to that point. What are you doing with your beauty? I was barely your age when I met your father. And there are still lots of rich men in this city whose sole interest is girls like you. Sell ice cubes. Months later, instead of ice cubes or juice, I was selling my body on the sidewalks. I spent many sleepless nights running bars, nightclubs, hotels, looking for sugar daddies and tourists. I was regularly scammed and abused. School was nowhere in my mind. I no longer had any dreams. My body was too tired and my soul broken too. Sometimes I wished for my own death. Was I really not dead? Yes. Jennifer is dead. Tell it to my late father. Make my mother understand it, please. Jennifer is dead. Forgive me, my daughter. I'm sorry. I did you more than harm. I handed you over to death. Forgive me, my daughter. You don't deserve this, Jennifer. You do not deserve this disease. No child deserves what happened to you. Forgive me, my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I 
At the moment, I'm looking for the third Jennifer, the one that will reconnect with life, give love to others, create awareness among the youth, fight sexual slavery and recommit to religious values. I'm searching my soul, but I'm happy to be here under the care of the church. You are welcome, Jennifer. Thank you. More than ever before, we are a family here. Let's put all our complaints to God. He will translate our sorrows into joy. Thank you all for your confidence. Questions will be answered during the next meeting. Now, let us entrust ourselves to God before we leave. O oh, infinitely Holy Father, Thou who created us, continue to manifest Your power in our lives and watch over each one of us. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Sometimes I wish for my own death. Was I really not dead? Yes, Jennifer is dead. Tell it to my late father. Make my mother understand it, please. Jennifer is dead. So we, we still get to the, to the idea of curiosity, trying to experiment, what it feels like, and all that. <laughs> yes. Some people nowadays take it as part of life. That's why. They, yeah. they, they do what? They take it as part of life. <laughs> sex, eh? Yeah, so for some people, sex is part and parcel of life. It is like, it is like a talk. So some part of life. <laughs> Finally, uh, I would like to say the following. One, uh, the youth of nowadays, they misunderstand love and sex. Sure. Yeah, that one, uh, I think you may talk more on that. Because if you talk of sex, uh, people think you love that person. But when you love someone, people think of sex. So that's uh, one of the factors also which is affecting the youth. Another one is, most of the youth nowadays are of there. 
IDC type. I don't care group. So we find that they don't care much about the STIs, but they care of getting pregnant, like for the case of the ladies. They say, if I get an STI, well, I'm good. It not affect me so much, like uh, not dropping out of school and other things. But when they get pregnant, that's, they find the much effect there. That's also another thing. Then, lastly, the way the youth from nowadays take alcohol and then drug abuses, that's also another factor leading to the cause or whole spread of these STIs. Thank you. To empower once again, facilitators who have been guiding the senior ones and senior twos. And now, at this moment, the whole community of Oche County and Jesuit College. Here are the students who are gathered here today. I would like to take this honor to thank you for having spent the two days listening to our facilitator who pertains HIV and even telling us that it exists. And today we to affirm this that HIV AIDS exists. And in order to avoid it, we have to be empowered with skills. Skills on how we can control ourselves from achieving HIV AIDS. Dear facilitators, I would like to thank you for having spared all this time to come here and be with us for two days, explain to us a number of skills on how we can avoid this deadly disease that has come to endanger our lives. I would like also to thank the patron, Mr. Tolit Robert. Together with all the other staff members who have been working with him, and the team of students who have spearheaded our happy activities in this school. Thank you very much, and I request you to continue giving knowledge about this HIV AIDS, especially here in Uganda and in Africa at large. I must say that I'm very happy to see that a group of you, the students, are now presenting radio talks to educate the masses here in Igulu and Uganda at large. Thank you very much. Let us clap for them. <laughs> One word I'd like to say is the best person to prevent you from getting HIV AIDS is you yourself. It is you yourself. Don't say, Brother Godfrey will come and protect me from getting it. No. Don't say, Teacher Robert will come and protect me from getting it. No. The only thing we can give is the awareness that HIV exists. And if you control yourself from indulging in activities that bring it, then you will survive the disease. When you get it, the doctor will ask you to do a number of exercises, eat well, and pray to God that you die a peaceful one. Having accepted to send five theory facilitators to come and give a lot of knowledge to the society of which is a company this week already. And I also like to send my sincere thanks to the whole student who department supported us. Not forgetting with the co-founder of our club, the, the pioneers and the patron. But with this happy uh, in this school started in or on the fourth of February 2013. We are writing on scripts. But it commenced as a club on the 24th of February, 2014. So within those few uh, months, 
with some of the achievements, despising some of the challenges that we have, but following us some of the achievements we have, we successfully acted the drum, which was entitled the Unfulfilled Dream. We also had Friday Assembly Talk. There was also sharing with the youth of Guru Army. We held internal seminars. There was also radio talk shows which you have heard that I'm actually talking about. You have so far had two radio talk shows and mega. And we also received the certificate of marriage in last year for those who are there for being the, the best club actually for the year. You know what it means in all aspects. Because this journey started in a very interesting way. Uh, Mr. Robert Tobit uh, visited Nairobi for a workshop. And just like any other participant, and I really owe that to him and Brother Masereka for the support he has afforded a happy program. So I think we need to clap for them. I won't say so much because there's so much that has already been said. And the evidence is there of what the students have done. I hear the students have done a routine, and now we've finished in December. From this year, I hope it's going to be spread out in sub-Saharan Africa, where all Jesuit schools are. So we are going to be having many more schools, and not only Jesuit schools, many other Catholic schools want to adopt a happy. And we are very encouraged when we are able to come all the way here and not be disappointed by seeing how much we've done. You know, I may say so many things, any other teacher here may say so many things, but at the end of the day, it is you. The decision lies with you as a young person. As we plan these things today, you may not see it today. You may not even see it tomorrow. You may not even see it after two years. But there's a time in life you realize and know that I've been doing things in a certain way, or I've been thinking in a certain way because somebody somewhere planted a seed. Can we be together? There's a lot of noise here. Please. I'm not here because of me, Pauline. Neither are we here for ourselves. We are here because of you. So I think it is important, as I talked on the first day, the power of listening is very important. Because often we think we know it all at this age and then you realize you know nothing. I was also an adolescent and I can testify from my own experience I'm here because somebody But for you, Ocha, right now you have the information. There's a school somewhere that wishes we had something like this. I wish you see the list we have. But we cannot finish. We cannot even go half for it. Because there's a lot that is needed. But when you are able to get this kind of information today, it is a blessing, it is a gift, which you should embrace. But the main thing happy ones that each and every young person who encounters it, you feel part of it, you own it, it is a way of life. It is not a textbook, a program is not a fun club, but it is something that is based on the real things we have in life. The way we live with our parents, with our friends in our own communities. I happy want you to be ambassadors of change, agents of change in your community because you'll be achieving the very best because every time you have to be exploring the very best in you to find excellence. And I know this is in line with ignition, pedagogy, spirituality, doing the very best you can in everything you do, and finding God in others. And I want to point out something very important. Okay, a happy is, is targeting young people to prevent HIV, to prevent AIDS for those living with HIV. This is very important, because you, you have the biggest problem in stigma. You stigmatize your peers. So a happy, once more. 
You seem not to be happy. Are you happy to be here? Yes. Okay, um, Claire Naroso. I'm a teacher at St. Aloysius Gonzaga, a Jesuit school like this one. And I'm also trained in the Ajahn program. So our aim here was to sensitize you so that you do not get into the problems that the other youths have already gotten into. And one thing I was told that if I told you are a human being and you are always giving excuses each time you are asked something, then just know that excuses are nails that build a house called what? Failure. So you've been told today, you've been sensitized. Next time you go mess up, don't say you are never told. Because you'll be building your own house, which is called what? Failure. So as students, we are one students, we are there, we are guided, that's why we are here. And the reason why we are here is to make sure that you do not lose the right path. So be good students, listen to your teachers, and eventually put in more effort, and you'll pass successfully. Thank you. The change is made in the handover. Uh, the, the files that are supposed to be given to them. the new leaders, of the happy club will be given directly to their offices. So we are going to the next program that is the awarding of certificates. Head of recognition awarded to Odo Bosco. Odo Bosco
The head teacher, the dean of students, the teachers around, and you, my fellow students, good evening. Yeah, I'm so happy today that we are having a happy club officially launched in the Chicampton Jesuit College, and I hope we shall do more in order to make this confused world a better world. And I will also encourage my, you, my fellow students, to have the courage to join us so that we may strive for a free AIDS era and we develop the world. With this, I'd like to end here by sending my sincere thanks to the agent office and to thank them for giving us their time to spend it with us here, giving us knowledge. Thank you so much. Uh, with this, I would like to stop here. So thank you very much. Let us raise up for the closing prayer. O oh, infinitely holy Father, Thou who created us, continue to manifest your power in our lives and watch over each one of us. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Okay, no, 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 wait, wait. Don't waste your time. First of all, she speaks only Luganda. Only. Yeah. only so Luganda. what are you going to tell her, you nameless? What are you going to, what are you going to tell her? Simple English to Luganda Swahili combination. Yes. Washington. Avoid it, my sister. Be 